Today on In Grace, we're in Grand Canyon. On an adventure of a lifetime. You're gonna love it. Stay tuned. Are you looking for hope? My amazing parents taught me to look for hope in the Lord. And that gave me a passion to explore God's incredible creation. I'm Jim Scudder, Jr. Let's go on an adventure together and find hope in grace. Welcome to In Grace, I'm Jim Scudder, Jr. And today we're gonna take you on Ellie's Grand Rafting Adventure. This is the final episode of our In Grace Grand Canyon Rafting Adventure. And what an adventure it has been. We've gotten to see our featured family, the Arboros, Scott, the dad, Heather, the mom, and our star, Ellie, thoroughly enjoying their giveaway trip. We've heard their amazing story of cancer and healing with more to come today. And we've learned so much from our experts from Answers in Genesis, Dr. Andrew Snelling, AKA Doc Rock, has showed us so many proofs that this canyon was formed by the events surrounding Noah's flood, not millions of years. And Dr. Danny Faulkner has showed us the stars, planets, and galaxies that God created on day four of Creation Week. Out here in the clear, dark skies of the Grand Canyon, the heavens do declare the glory of God. And now, we have come to the final day of rafting. Who knows what adventures await? So show us where we're at, where we camped. Okay, we're camped here at Upset Rapid, mile 150. Were you upset that we had to camp here? We I missed, was. We I, missed the campsite. Yeah, we missed quite a few campsites. <laughs> and we're gonna go through Havasu Rapid, halfway down the rapid, and we pull in and we, we actually park in a rapid. In a rapid, oh, that'll be exciting. And we're gonna hike into Havasu Creek. Ah. A beautiful place with blue waters. And then we get to Vulcan's Anvil which is a, a, a volcanic rock sitting in the middle of the channel. We'll, cool. stop, we'll stop there briefly to talk. And then we had the granddaddy of them all, the biggest rapid on the, on the, it's the fastest navigable rapid in North America. What? Lava Falls Rapid. It's 19 seconds of sheer terror. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of fun. Yes, it sounds and exciting. So we go through that. <laughs> all right. And uh, we recover our breath and we get to our helipad here, just past mile 187, and we actually camp on a beach with a helipad above us. Dr. Snelling told us that our first stop today would be a beautiful but somewhat challenging, and I interpreted that as dangerous, hike up a side canyon to Havasu Falls. This all sounded like fun, but our raft captain and trip leader, Jake, warned us that the approach to the place where we get off the rafts was in the middle of rapids. He said to hang on and wait for his command to get off. He also said to keep our life jackets on until we were safely away from the rapids, as he had heard of people falling in and being swept away. As we boarded our rafts, we noticed that the canyon had a lot of volcanic rocks on the sides and in the river, 
As a matter of fact, our next stop would be Vulcan's Anvil, a huge piece of basalt that was right in the middle of the river. Andrews said that this was more evidence of the fact that a massive release of water can and did carve the Grand Canyon, not the Colorado River over millions of years. Above us on the north rim here is a volcano, Vulcan's Throne. And if you look downstream, you'll see there's lots of lava now starting to appear. Some of it flowed downstream, some of it flowed upstream, and it kept building up, building up, building up, and eventually, 1,000 feet high, blocking the river, downstream, upstream. Everyone agrees that these lava dams were catastrophic and caused some catastrophic changes from here on down through the, through the canyon. Andrew does have me a bit worried about Lava Falls because even the name sounds ominous to me, but it does sound like a fun way to end. So Ray, we are getting ready to go down Lava Falls, which is, I believe, probably the largest rapid here um, in Grand Canyon. How do you feel about it? I'm excited, look at nerves, I'm excited. This is supposed to be the big one. It is the fastest navigable white water in the United States. And it's named because of lava, and you see all the lava up on the hillside here. So I just want to say goodbye. It's been nice knowing all of you. It's been a great run. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. Come on, baby. Here we go, lava falls. There we go. Here we go, we're gonna get wet. We're gonna get very wet. There it is. There it is, yeah! Yeah! Oh! 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 Jake's got it. Here we go. Oh yeah! Stop the video. At this moment, I thought I was underwater. In these few seconds that seemed like an eternity. I thought about the times in life when it feels like we're in a washing machine. We're not sure what is up and what is down. It's the time that all we can do is trust the captain of our salvation to get us to the other side. Play the video. Have you ever wondered how the Grand Canyon was formed? Evolution says the Colorado River carved out the Grand Canyon over millions of years. But what does the evidence say? When you give a gift of any amount to Ingrace, you will receive our brand new video series, Ellie's Grand Rafting Adventure. Does the Grand Canyon prove millions of years or Noah's flood? In this adventure, Jim Scudder Jr. takes you to the bottom of the Grand Canyon with PhD scientists to explore the overwhelming evidence of Noah's flood. And when your gift is $35 or more, you will also receive two more incredible video series about the Ark of Noah. Call 800-78-GRACE or go to ingrace.tv to order your videos now. We had finally made it. After 187 miles of river and rapids, we pulled into our final campsite. As we did every time, everyone got busy unloading the camp kitchen, our stuff, chairs, and cots. And the cots were a little tricky to set up. One of our Ingrace friends on the trip was Jason Clark. We met Jason while filming our Northern Lights Ingrace episodes in Alaska and Jason agreed to demonstrate the proper way to set up a cot. I have my bed all set up. So now, get tested. Oh! <laughs> hey, I guess, I guess this one wasn't set up right. Or this one was busted. We will now hear the conclusion of Heather, Scott, and Ellie Yarborough's amazing story. Heather had battled cancer several times, but it would come back again. And while I'm very cautious about calling something a miracle, 
They were about to have a unique experience arising from the faith of a child. Two years after that um, third diagnosis, mm -hmm. I went back just for routine scans. I was going back and they said, you have another little spot on your spine and it's inoperable. Um, your only choice is to do some chemo again. And at this point, Ellie Ray was six years old. And I remember going home one night and I would lay down in the bed with her every night. We would pray and talk and she laid in the bed one night and she said, Mama, she said, where's that spot? And I said, well, it's right here on my back. And she said, well, can I pray for you? And it just touched me in, in just such a, a special way. And I said, absolutely. And she laid her hand on my back and she said the most powerful prayer I think I've ever heard anybody speak. And I just felt a weight lifted off of me and felt different. And as we were laying there that night talking, she said, Mama, can I tell you something? And I said, of course. And she said, when I was praying over you, I saw an angel standing behind you, and that angel touched you and healed you. I think I did just a few chemo treatments, and that spot was gone. Sometimes God heals. Other times he chooses not to. The Apostle Paul prayed three times for healing, and God told him, my grace is sufficient for thee. When you say Grand, Grand Canyon, around every corner, there was something grand, mm -hmm. and it just grew in scale and scope, it became bigger and more grand. Mm -hmm. This beautiful setting, the kind and patient people mm -hmm. who stood around as we worked through different situations, the skilled boatmen, mm -hmm turning into a kindergarten teacher and reading us a story That's right. from the boatman's tale That's right. about what a kind word can do mm -hmm. to change a situation from mm -hmm. bad to good. That's right. It was grand on every level. As the helicopters arrived to come fly us out of the canyon back to the rim world, I started to reflect on the last seven days. It's amazing how much can happen in a week. In a week, God created all of this. In a week, we rafted nearly 200 miles. It took a week for mostly strangers to become lifelong friends. I thought back to the quicksand and Dr. Danny Faulkner's quicksand cannonball. Hold on, watch this! <laughs> I thought of gazing at a sky full of stars, framed by the canyon, taking my breath away. I thought of wearing my life jacket in a most unconventional and uncomfortable way to body raft the little Colorado River. I thought of the amazing turquoise blue of the river, the clear green color of the Colorado River, all the shades of red in the walls of the canyon and in the skies above the canyon. I thought of the amazing hikes up to amazing heights. I thought of Heather's determination and how she encouraged all of us. I thought of jokes being played and jokes being told. I thought of rapids and how rapidly all this had passed too fast. Come on, go do it, okay? It's so good here. You just got off the helicopter. You gotta tell me what. what it was you... so fun. I could see everything from the front seat. It was awesome. <laughs> was that? Would you put bring that up there with one of your better experiences or best experiences yes, for this trip? Yes, definitely. definitely. <laughs> what what do you think, Dad? Sweet. <laughs> I wish we could ride around a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs>
it was sad seeing everybody on the beach waving us off the, and the river disappearing beneath us. It was so sad, but when I wasn't there, was the helicopter it was so fun. <laughs> I thought of the evidence we had seen for creation and Noah's flood. The fossil log with its fronds buried several layers underneath, proving that it could not have taken millions of years to be buried, but only several hours, evidence of a massive flood. We also learned that the Colorado River is not powerful enough to clear out the wall collapses that form the rapids. How could it possibly have carved out the entire canyon? More evidence for Noah's flood. I thought back to how we learned that the Coconino sandstone crossbeds were at the angle showing they had been formed underwater, not in a dry desert. More flood evidence. Then there were the reptile or amphibian tracks, always going uphill as if they were trying to escape from something. And the tracks were made in wet sand, not dry, with their bodies found many layers above the tracks. This is not possible if the layers took millions of years to form, but it is what you would expect if there was a massive water catastrophe. And then there were the dolomite stripes in the red wall. Dolomite is only formed in warm water, and the fountain of the great deep breaking open in Noah's flood would create these warm water conditions. More flood evidence. Next, I thought of the nautiloid fossils. Billions of them all pointing in the same general direction from as far away as Colorado, proving a directional flow of massive proportions, more evidence of Noah's flood. Monument fold is evidence that the layers were still wet when the plateau was pushed up, causing this fold with no evidence of reheating or fracturing. More evidence that the biblical narrative of Noah's day is accurate. The great unconformity, an enigma for the evolutionary paradigm, is missing thousands of feet of material. Uniformitarianism can't explain this, but the Bible and Noah's flood can. The worm and trilobite trails at Deer Creek Falls showed us rapid burial and extreme complexity at a layer that evolution says is where the first so-called simple creatures evolved. Once again, the trails and bodies of the creatures are separated by hundreds of feet in height. Impossible if it took millions of years, but easily explained with a massive flood. And Vulcan's anvil showed evidence of how a massive release of water can carve massive canyons. All of this evidence is there right now in the Grand Canyon for all to see. The evidence for creation and Noah's flood is there. Now, what are you going to do with it? I think the the most powerful experience was the Blacktail Canyon because when Dr. Andrew Snelling was describing the layers and how that was, you know, the weight of sin that crushed, you know, Christ, you know, as that bottom layer and then he, and you had us to walk to that waterfall in silence, and I just could not keep it together. I just lost it because I thought I'm part of that. I'm part of that, those layers. I'm part of that sin that crushed Jesus who loves me so much, and it just broke my heart. But then I was also encouraged because He died for us, and He took that sin. He bore the weight. There was a worldwide flood. Here's the evidence all around me. But you know what? God gave a chance to every person in Noah's day to be saved, but only Noah's family got on the ark. There is a coming judgment. The judgment is of fire. And you say, well, I don't believe that. I think deep down you do. And maybe you've seen the evidence that the Bible is true, that when the scriptures speak of, of history, it's, it's accurate. Well, maybe that's convinced you that you need to deal with your sin problem. We've all sinned. I have, you have, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
If you're honest, you'll admit that. Well, let me just show you an illustration real quick that will show you exactly what I'm talking about, how you can be saved from your sins. I have a rock. This is a piece of flood deposit. And again, a symbol of God's judgment. In my left hand, which I would like for, to represent you and me, I will place this rock. My right hand would be Jesus. He came to this earth. He is the son of God. He never sinned, but he was made sin for us. Did you just see that? We are sinners. We can't get rid of this ourselves. We can never be good enough. So he loved us so much that he came for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the greatest news in the entire world is that you can be saved from your sins by simple faith and trust in Jesus Christ. It's not about religion. It's not about being better because you can never be good enough. It's about accepting a free gift called eternal life. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Please trust Jesus Christ as your Savior today. Have you ever wondered how the Grand Canyon was formed? Evolution says the Colorado River carved out the Grand Canyon over millions of years. But what does the evidence say? When you give a gift of any amount to In Grace, you will receive our brand new video series, Ellie's Grand Rafting Adventure. Does the Grand Canyon prove millions of years or Noah's flood? In this adventure, Jim Scudder Jr. takes you to the bottom of the Grand Canyon with PhD scientists to explore the overwhelming evidence of Noah's flood. And when your gift is $35 or more, you will also receive two more incredible video series about the Ark of Noah. Call 800-78-GRACE or go to ingrace.tv to order your videos now. Next week on In Grace, see the untold story of Staff Sergeant David Carnes and his heroic rescue on September 11, 2001. I kind of gathered my, my colleagues and I said, look, I says, you know, I think a commercial airliner hijacked by terrorists uh, has flown into the building. And I said, God, if it means my life today, Please use me to help anybody that needs help down there. I will give my life today in your service. Record every single In Grace episode. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's Word. In Grace is a viewer-supported ministry. Thank you for your prayers and gifts.